everyone, this is Dr. Jin. In this video, we're going to talk about the block shear, another limiting state for tension member design. In this video, we're going to describe and define the limiting state of block shear. We're going to identify different block shear failure paths. And uh, I have an example for you showing how to calculate the block shear design strength of a bearing type bolted connection. Block shear is actually covered in chapter J in your ASC SC steel design manual. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, yield limit state and fracture or rupture limit states are uh, included in chapter D. So uh, in this section, we're going to check chapter J in the steel specifications. Right, block shear. Uh, block shear is uh, a failure by fracture that involves tension on one surface and shear on the perpendicular surface. It's tearing out a block of material. For example, let's look at the picture on your left hand side. And a tension member is bolted on a gusset plate and it tends to be tore out like this, like what show on your uh, right hand side, right? So uh, it's gonna be sheared off along the longitudinal surface, the longitudinal plane, and uh, and the tension rupture on the perpendicular surface. So it's a failure of tearing out a block of material. And another example is like this. So this is a failure mode that we show in on the cover page, right? So as tension force applied on the member, it tends to be tail out like this. So block, uh, a block of the material is going to be tailed out like this. So in this mode, uh, this block of the material was sheared off along the two shear planes and be tailed out along the perpendicular tension plane. Okay, so two shear surfaces and one tension surface. And here's some other examples of the block shears. Can be tailed out in uh, um, other ways. For example, uh, this is a plate welded or bolted on the flanges. So when uh, T when the force P is applied on this member, uh, since the web stiffened, right? So the web is also acting like a stiffener. So it, it's very hard to tell, tell the the web out, right? Tell. So more likely it will be tail out along the block on the side of the fringes. So like this. So it will fail, it will be sheared off along the weakest plane. So remember that. So we need to identify the the block, the tearing out block with the minimum strength. Right? So the minimum strength will be controlling. So we have to identify the weakest block. Uh, and it is also applies to the welded members. So for example, the plate is welded on another plate and it will also be tail out along uh, along the plane. So the block will also be tailed out along the welded lines like this. So the only difference is we don't have holes along the shear plane and tension plane. So when we calculate the block shear stress there will be uh, so your gross cross-sectional area will be equal to your net area. So that's the only difference between the welded connection and the bolted connection. Shear block shear strength is defined in section J four, section J four in in the manual. So please 
turn to page 16.1-130A of your manual. So you will find this section. You will find these equations. That defines the block shear strength. Uh, Rn block shear strength is equal to 0.6 times Fu times AMV uh, plus UBS times Fu times ANT. Uh, so the, this 0.6 times Fu and this portion is actually is the uh, shear strength. So shear strength is approximately equal to 0.6 times Fu. So that's your shear uh, fractional strength. So how to say that? Uh, shear, ultimate shear strength. Let's say that. Ultimate shear stress and similarly and this item 0.6 times Fy is the yield shear stress okay so the first item, the first item gives you is the shear strength along the shear plane. And the second item is the strength provided by the perpendicular tension plane. It's equal to UBS times FU times ANT. So it's uh, so the last two symbols are very easy to understand. FU is the ultimate tensile strength ANT is the net tension area oh, uh, and AMV is the net shear area net shear area and UBS UBS uh, when the tension stress is uniform then is equal to 1 and when it's non-uniform is equal to 0.5 so most of the cases uh, especially in this class we assume tension stress is uniform Okay, so in this course, we always assume that UBS is equal to 1. Okay, and the second item is the same. So meaning that your, out, your block shear is the smaller of these two. So you have to compare, uh, compare the first two items. You have to compare 0 0.6 times uh, or compare 0.6 times FU times AMV with 0 0.6 times Fy times AGV. So it really means that you really have to determine whether it is the ultimate, it is the fracture, the shear fracture or shear rupture controls or the shear yielding controls. And note that the fee for block shear is equal to 0 0.75. Okay, so that is the basic equation for block shear strengths. Okay, so this slide summary summarizes the the code equation J four dash five. So it really tells you that uh, block shear strength is lesser of these two. Okay, uh, and the shear component the shear component is the shear strength along the shear plane. And the second component is the tension strength along the tension and the tensile plane. Okay. And you have to determine the net area subject to a shear, which is going to be the area along the shear plane. And AGV is the gross area subject to shear. So we don't really need to use AGV, the gross shear subject to shear, in the equations. But in order in order to calculate the net shear, net area subject to shear AMV, you must uh, know AGV, right? Because your AMV is equal to AGV minus uh, the area, the whole areas, right? And the second item, uh, ANT, net area subject to N. A tension. So again, in order to calculate A and T, you must be able to obtain AGV, which is the gross 
area subject to tension. This area right is uh, you have to determine the AGV first. Oh sorry, AGT. And AGT minus the whole area along the tension tension plane. Alright. Okay, so here is the example. So for example, uh, it's going to be tail out uh, like this. So the shaded area is the block going to be tailed out. Uh, and the net area is equal to the gross area minus the area lost to holes. So uh, AGT, AGT, which is going to be this one, right? So AGT is going to be omega times T, the thickness. So ANT is going to be the gross cross-sectional area omega t minus hole so along the shear plane so I only have half holes so there's I only have half holes along the plane so half whole area gonna be deducted so a half times d d is the whole area so d is the whole area so uh, what about say uh, the d hole is equal to uh, D bolt. Okay, so it's the same, right? So uh, the whole the diameter, the whole diameter is equal to the bolt diameter plus one a for stand for uh, D B less than one inches right standard standard holes okay uh, and we'll go ahead to calculate a and t so uh, a and then we go ahead to calculate a and v okay. so before we get a and v we have to calculate a g v right so a g v is the total length of the shear plane b times the thickness and along this shear plane uh, there are two and 2.5 holes needs to be deducted to get a and v so a and v equals b t minus 2.5 holes times d times t and again uh, and this is Okay, so let's just say the D is equal to DB plus one eighth for D bolt less than one inches. Okay, and then after we get the areas, we plug in, plug them into the block shear equations. Okay, and in general, in some cases, there are uh, more than one possible failure blocks. Then we have to identify a block with the lowest VRN. Right? The lowest VRN defines our block shear strength. Okay, uh, some tips for uh, finding block shear strengths. So first of all, we have to check all possible blocks uh, and find the block with the lowest VPN. And uh, we have some examples after. Okay? And in some blocks, there, there's some zigzag passes, path, so we have to account for that. Okay, so uh, additional example for that. Uh, so there's no, uh, there are two channels bolted back to back. The channels bolted to a gusset plate back to back. So let's find out the possible uh, blocks for the, for, uh, for one channel. And all together, the VPN gonna be uh, the strength in one channel times two. Okay. 
so for example uh, in this one so the the first one gives you the one the number one possible block right so possible gonna be tail out like this so in this case you can check uh, AGT and AMV and AGV and also it's also likely to fail uh, to be tail out like this so you have two zigzag paths along the 10 cell plan so AG a AGV and AMV is the same as the previous case and the only difference the tension tension plan so there are two zig zig passes so add 2 times s square over 4g times t okay and more importantly in this case so along the pass along the tension pass you can see there's half half hole here half hole half hole so 1 2 3 4 four half holes so, so altogether there will be two holes going to be de deducted from the tension pass so that's uh, minus 2 times dt okay and it's also uh, let's check this one if see if it's going to uh, control uh, the answer is no right because you will get the same you will get the same uh, is this the same oh no not, not the same okay so let's just see how to if it is going to be control if if this possible to fail a lot like this uh, and this is what we're going to determine so first we're going to determine AGTA and TGV and AMV like what we did before but the only differences is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight both in total. But if it's fail like this, only seven out of eight will will be resisting. So you have to time eight over seven. So and you will get the equivalent uh, equivalent error. So you will see that if you have the extra number, you will be able to compare this with the other cases to see if it is will be controlling okay and now here comes the example so that's what we're gonna spend some time on it okay so this is the same example we have did before right so we just determined the uh, yield strengths the yield limit state strengths and the rupture strengths rupture vpn so we determined the first two limit states now uh, let's let's uh, find out the block shear strengths for the same for the same connection to see if block shear will be controlling okay so every el everything everything else is the same right so uh, and this time we just figure we just want to determine what's gonna be the most likely uh, the failure pass the failure block okay so let's take a look So this is what we this uh, pl this is the failure plan for rapture. We did that before. Now here we want to talk about what what indeed the block shear will look like. So uh, there are multiple pos there are a lot of uh, possibilities, right? There there are multiple ways that the tension member will will be tailed out so let's just take a look so uh, we probably will draw all the possible failure mode so for example uh, it could be if we if we pull this way then it probably will fail like this so your block probably will be like this right uh, and I will say since it will be tail will be tail out like this and it also could be uh, tailed out like this right so 
uh, you have shear plane, horizontal shear plane, and the vertical tension plane. In this case, you have the same horizontal shear plane, but the zigzag tension plane. Okay, and maybe it could be like this. It could be. Uh, but if we compare these two, if we compare these two, so if we calculate it, so your uh, AMV, so in this case, your AMV and your uh, A, uh, ANT will be the same, right? Will be the same. Uh, oh no! So your A and T will be the same, but your in this case, your uh, A and V gonna be shorter. Your shear plane gonna be shorter, so your A and V gonna be smaller. But in this case, there's only so eight eight volts are resisting, so the total VPN has to times eight over seven. Uh, probably you have to calculate, you have to compare the actual value for these two cases. Okay, uh, and somebody may ask, wh what if, what if, why they couldn't be failed like this? Why I couldn't have two shear plans like this? Well, it could, but if you compare these two cases, Right, so in the two, these two cases, uh, you're gonna have shorter tension plan, but you're gonna have almost twice as much shear resistance, the shear capacity. Right, so mean meaning that this one, if it feel like this, the block shear strength, the shear component of block shear component of this is gonna be almost twice as much as this one. So I'm I'm assuming that the shear pass is much much longer than the tension pass. So I would say this one will have higher block shear strength, so it will not likely to be control to be controlling. So similarly, uh Right, it could fail like this, or so I will say. So all this uh, shear blocks with two shear planes will not likely to control because it will give it will yield much more block shear strength because there are two shear planes that you can use to resist the all the tension load. So I will, I will cross out these two. Uh, and some of you may ask, what if uh, fail like this? It looks pretty similar to the first to the first one, right? But if you look closer, this is the angle. So the leg is underneath, it's on the bottom. So that means if you tail out, you have to tail the leg out as well. It, it's gonna take much more effort to take the leg out, to tail the leg out compared to this one. So in this one, you only tail out one leg. You only tail out one leg. In this, you have to tail out two legs altogether. It's almost impossible to control. So I'll cross out this. So now I only left the three. Left the three. Um, so I'm gonna compare. Uh, I'm gonna compare the three cases. Um, so first of all, I will calculate the the tension okay so if i gonna compare these two they have the same they should have the same shear component and the difference between these two gonna be the tension the tension right so let's calculate the tension area Okay, 
so a n t so let's see what's the a n t uh, a n t say uh, the the total the total height is six inches so say the it's going to be six minus six minus two one quarter inches okay. and then subtracted half of the holes so minus half uh, the bolt area is seven eighths plus one eighth inches and times the thickness Okay, so time the thickness. Since uh, thickness is the same, so uh, we just leave it here. So the the pass length is three point two five times t. T is the thickness. All right, and and a and t for this case is. Uh, equal to uh, also six minus two half inches to uh, two and a quarter inches, and then subtracted. So there are one point five holes. One point five holes along the path. And one zigzag path, so plus 1.5 square over. So note that the gauge distance S is 1.5. Okay, so and G is 2.5. So uh, it's going to be 4 times 2.5 and times T. You will see that the second case yields less net tension error. Means uh, since we're going to have the same shear component, and the smaller net tension error will yield smaller tension strength component. So the second one will have smaller shear uh, block shear strength. So the second one will be controlling. Okay. Uh, and if you want to compare, you want to know the third case is a little bit uh, hard to determine. But if you really want to compare these two, so these two, the case, uh, compare case three with case two, you will see they will have the same tension uh, error. But the larger, but the uh, smaller, uh, the smaller, uh, Shear net error. Okay, so uh, I probably will skip that. But if you go ahead to calculate yourself, you will see uh, the block shear the block shear strength of this one will not be controlled. So the case two would be the one yields the smallest uh, VRN. Okay, then we just determined that the the critical the critical block gonna be this one. Okay, so we're gonna determine VRM based on this block. Um, so first of all, we're gonna calculate the four areas. So AGT, which is gonna be the zigzag, right? So we already determined. Is two point four eight times t. So uh, let's skip that. I'm gonna skip that and two point four eight times t. Uh, it's gonna be two point four eight. The thickness is. 
three A's. equals point nine three inch square and AGV is the area along the shear plane so AGV the total is uh, let's see the dimension so the total is uh, so the length from here to here is going to be the total going to be 13.5 Total is 13.5 inches. So uh, the AGV is 13.5 inches times the thickness. Okay, uh, and the AMV is going to be the AGV. Subtracted, subtract the, subtract the holes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, three point five holes. Needs to be deducted. Uh, and the hole diameter one inch, right? times the thickness and equals uh, equals 3.75 inch squares okay so uh, I calculate AGV as well because we're gonna need that Okay, uh, and if we go back to the equations, right? So we have to compare. So we have to compare uh, Fy times Ag. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. All right, right here. So we have to compare Fu times AMV with Fy times AGV. Do that, uh, and I'm gonna calculate Fy times AGV. Okay, so Fy is 36 psi times AGV. And compare it with FU AMV. Uh, FU is 58 times 3.75. Okay, and see which one we'll be controlling. Okay, so the smaller one will be controlling. So the shear yielding controls. Okay. Um, then I can go ahead to calculate my phi Rn. So phi Rn, uh, phi is equal to 0 0.75 times uh, 0.6 times the controlling one times 182.5. One six and plus uh, so plus FU right FU times ANT so it's times to uh, 50 A KSI times uh, ANT times ANT which is going to be this one inch square Okay, here, don't forget we have two angles. So in total times two angles. Okay, okay and 
I got 245. I just round, round it up to the whole number to make things easier. Okay. All right. So that's what I get for the block share for the tension member. Now uh, it's the same to determine the block share for gusset play. Okay, so it's the same that uh, when when we pull the tension member this way, and it's very likely that the block shear gonna be uh, either like this, right? So like the picture like uh, very like much like the picture showing in the cover page right or uh, maybe tail out tail out like this or possibly like this okay so that's uh, all the possible failure block I can draw and now let's compare which one is more likely be controlling. So the first one, like I said, the first one is very hard to tell like this, take more effort, take more, uh, it's gonna take more effort to tell this out along the two shear plan, right? Because the shear, the two shear plans provide a big, um, pretty big uh, strength. So, I will say compared to the case two and case three, uh, the case one, the blocks of in the case one will have much larger block shear strength. So I will cross out the first one, and let's see the the case the next two cases which one will be critical. Okay, so compare. Let's like take a closer look. They gonna have the same tension they're gonna have the ten tension uh, the le same length of the tension pass right so although it looks different but the length of the failure tension failure pass gonna be the same and then so the tension component will be the same for these two cases and let's look at the the shear component uh, the K3 gonna have the shorter shear failure pass meaning that the K3 is going to have smaller tension strengths meanwhile they have the same sorry smaller shear strengths meanwhile they have the same tension strengths so K3 will be critical okay now we eventually find out the possible the most possible uh, block shear the blocks okay then let's determine go ahead determine the block shear for the case 3 okay all right so uh, you can pause this video and calculate it by yourself and uh, compare the results right. all right and did you get the same answer so at least you should get the same answer for the four areas and then uh, after that I find out FU times AMV will be controlling because it's yield smaller numbers uh, here I uh, identify a mistake uh, right here so in here actually distance distant from the top bow to the edge gonna be one uh, one a quarter one quarter inch one and a quarter inches but it wouldn't change any other answers because we use six subjected subtracted the bottom distance so all right uh, we get that then we plug in the block shear equations right, so VRN is equal to uh, 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times the controlling shear 
capacity 380 right 380 okay and plus the the tension component is going to be ANT times the FU so it's going to be 80 FU is 80 remember we have different materials for gusset plate so 80 times uh, 2.74 equals okay equals I run it up to the whole number three three five three hundred thirty five kips. All right. Then so far, uh, in in the last uh, previous lecture, we calculate the yield and the fracture for tension member and gas play. In and in this example, we got the block shear for tension member and the gas play. So the block shear for tension member is two forty five. And gas play for uh, uh, the gas play block shear is three hundred thirty five kips. So so far it seems the block shear for tension member is controlling, but we don't know about the bearing and tail out strength yet. So we're gonna cover it later. So will be. covered later next lecture all right so it seems like block shear intention member will be controlling but even this value even the smallest value is still greater than PU right so we we're good so far all right so much for today so I hope this video helps you understand block shear better all right see you in next video Thank you.